Earlier this week, President Trump signed a directive to expand American space exploration. Space Policy One orders NASA to lead a program that sends astronauts back to the moon and eventually to Mars. The president said that he hopes to, quote, establish a footprint for a trip to Mars. The last manned mission to the moon was on Apollo 17 in 1972. Joining us now, CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, what goes into initiating a manned mission to the moon? Well, as you might expect, Rena, there's a real simple answer to that, and it comes down to money and congressional support. Uh, you know, George Bush Sr. back in 1989 announced some grandiose plans to uh, start off, you know, development of some kind of a, a Mars landing mission. Uh, Bush Jr., in the wake of the Columbia disaster back in 2003, uh, told NASA to finish the space station, retire the space shuttle fleet, and begin working on a return to the moon. The Obama administration came in and reversed that policy, said, hey, you know, we've been there, we've done that, we're going to focus on Mars and perhaps some flights to some asteroids. Uh, but he really never, none of these programs ever really got seriously funded. Uh, the Trump administration now has, has sided with, I think, the consensus opinion among aerospace people that the moon is a good choice. And let's go back to the moon. So he's directed NASA to start exploring that, as you said. But whether or not NASA ends up getting there or not will depend on successive uh, administrations and multiple Congresses to supply the money to make it happen. Long answer, but it really does come down to congressional support and money. So congressional support and money, would you say that's the reason why this hasn't been attempted since 1972, Bill? Yeah, pretty much. You know, I mean, uh, NASA has always wanted to go beyond low Earth orbit. That's been a long range goal. Uh, the Reagan administration approved the space station program. That was its big initiative. Uh, like I said, Bush Sr. had suggested, you know, start planning flights to the moon and on to Mars. But these things never really got funded. The space station takes up about three billion dollars of NASA's annual budget. The space shuttle took up another three or so billion uh, in the 90s. And so that's where the money went. Uh, but the space station's finished now, and the Trump administration wants to really focus on going back to the moon, as you said, as a stepping stone to eventual flights to Mars. Some have suggested that a trip to the moon would actually distract from a mission to Mars. There was an op-ed in Slate where Scott Hubbard, he's from Stanford University, and he suggested this could actually push back the timeline on Mars and even lead to other cuts in other parts of NASA. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's interesting. I know Scott Hubbard. He's a very smart guy, and, uh, and uh, I certainly respect his opinion. Uh, to me, um, if we're talking about human spaceflight, the moon makes the most sense. And I think an awful lot of people in the industry think that. You know, the moon's four days away. It's a, it's a great place to test the technology you need for missions to Mars. Remember, one way to flight, one way flight to Mars is six to seven months. Uh, you know, a mission's probably going to take a round trip a year and a half, something like that. The machines have to work. They have to be reliable. The life support systems cannot fail. All of these things have to be tested and developed to where you have the confidence to put human beings in a spaceship and send them off on a flight that would take that long. So I think I think the moon is a is a logical place to go test out that technology. There's certainly science and engineering you can do on the moon itself, uh, but it, it, it makes the most sense to me. Uh, as a stepping stone uh, toward Mars. And what are the challenges to getting to Mars? Oh my, it's, it's, it's pretty intense, really. Um, yeah. You know, if you think about it like that, a flight to the moon's kind of a walk around the block, you know, flying to Mars is cross country. Um, the first thing you gotta do is protect against space radiation. You know, on the, on the Earth orbit where the space station flies, they're protected by the Van Allen belts, which intercept a lot of the solar radiation that otherwise could uh, do long range damage to humans. You don't have that protection in space. Big solar storms could cause major damage, so you have to have a way to protect the crew. You've also gotta have a way to keep the crew physically fit. You know, when astronauts come back to Earth from the space station, when they spent, you know, six months or longer in space, those guys can barely walk. Mm. You know, even though they train two hours a day on the space station every day, uh, they still get very weak when you're not in gravity. So you've got to have some way uh, to keep the astronauts fit. So when they do land on Mars, you know, they're going to be able to climb down that ladder and go do some work. Yeah. Uh, the challenges are significant, but I think the biggest one, Rena, is, is, the, uh, is the reliability of the hardware. Mm. It's got to work. Mm. You know, when you talk about money, what about the cooperation with private companies? Would NASA work with companies like Elon Musk, SpaceX, or Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin? Yeah, I think those are those are excellent points, and there's no question uh, that, that uh, Elon Musk has his own plans to go to Mars, whether he's going with NASA or not. I think the whole private industry, uh, the commercial space uh, 
paradigm right now is absolutely something the administration will be interested in. They're going to look to all the help they can get, and I think it's also going to have to be international. I don't think the U.S. can mount a mission on its own, even to the moon, uh, for long duration. They're going to have to have help, but I think the Europeans will want on board. The Russians will almost certainly want to participate in something like that. Uh, China's participation, that's a remains to be seen. Right now, NASA's forbidden by law uh, to do uh, cooperative space missions with China, but clearly it's going to have to be international. And all the commercial help uh, that could be thrown into the mix is all to the better. Bill Harwood, thank you so much for joining us, Bill.